Hi, I am Thekla Petridou and this is our weekly video in English. And this week's video is um, a vlog, a video blog that was filmed while driving. I'm sorry about this, but uh, my Greek speaking viewers are used to my uh, traveling videos because I live in a village uh, which is about 30 minutes away from the town of Nicosia, of the city of Nicosia and Cyprus. We call it city, but it has something like 250,000 uh, people, so it's not so big as uh, big cities abroad. Anyway, and since once a week I have to go down to the city to do my chores, uh, and since this period I'm writing my new book, I don't have so much time for filming videos. So I use my time while uh, driving to film uh, videos. So to, to this week's uh, subject is about co-parenting with an undiagnosed person. We had a, a similar video in Greek which had the title, um, the same title and the same uh, subject how do you deal co-parenting with a person who might have a personality disorder diagnosis like narcissism for example because it is a common issue for many people that uh, uh, they find themselves to be hooked up with an ex-wife or an ex-husband that is not easy to cooperate and it's not easy to have any sane discussion with. In my channel, on my channel, on my YouTube channel, that we have uh, many videos in Greek and a few videos in English about narcissistic personality disorder, about people who are difficult to deal with, about people who connect with other people in a toxic way, about toxic wives, toxic husbands, toxic siblings, toxic partners, whatever. It's a big issue. Of course, if you are watching this video and you find the title interesting, this means that you are already in a situation that cannot be changed. I mean, if you married somebody who is uh, not a, a person that is easy to communicate with, if you married somebody who has narcissistic tendencies and it's an undiagnosed, undiagnosed person that if that person ever agrees to visit a psychiatrist or a psychologist, a clinical psychologist who can make um, a diagnosis for that person and that diagnosis might be narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder and so on. All the type of difficult personality disorders to live with and have a normal relationship with, you don't need me to tell you that it's not a wise choice. When we choose a partner for life, I strongly advise to choose somebody that is easy to communicate with and easy to make um, agreements about how to raise the children and how to deal with families' everyday issues. It's uh, vital to do that before getting married, before having a partner, beho before having children with somebody. Because if you marry a person, or if you cohabit with a person, or if you have a love relationship, a romantic relationship with somebody, and you realize during the relationship that you cannot live with that person, that it's so difficult to communicate, that it's difficult to live a peaceful life, you end this relationship and you get along with your life. No big harm done. But in the case that you decide to make, uh, to have children and make your partner a parent, then you have to deal with them, not for the, rel the rest of your life, but at least until your children are of legal age. So if you have young children that uh, are um, 
are in an age that they need to to take attention from both parents and your children are um, uh, either living with you and they have to visit the other parent during um, holidays or in the weekend or in any other case you have to deal with that person's personality so you divorce with that person but you actually have to have a kind of relationship with that parent because co-parenting is a relationship when you have a, a young child that you both take care of you need to be able to make, take decisions to communicate to have a communal way to bring that child up and it is very difficult to co-parent a child with an undiagnosed partner when you are married and it gets 10 times more difficult to do that after the divorce. Because people with personality disorders, they have a lot of uh, uh, selfishness and they are distinguished by a lack of empathy. They do not feel empathy for anybody, not even for their own children, yes. They do not feel sorry when they use their children to take, um, to take revenge on their, net or their, on their ex. I'm a psychologist. Um, my, my studies were uh, focused on social and clinical psychology. And I've worked uh, for over 15 years as a scientific advisor in family court. I've seen many cases of children being torn apart uh, during the fight between two very unstable parents. It's a very common situation, <sighs> unfortunately for the children, that both parents can be uh, acting as if they have one or a bouquet of personality disorders. As I explained in, in another video in English some weeks ago, I do not use the term narcissistic so easily, or I do not use any diagnosis for anybody I haven't seen. But because I've worked with couples and I was doing assessments for family court, many times I saw this dynamic in the relationship between two ex-partners, that is, I fight you, you fight me, we fight each other, we have fight with no any other specific reason than to win the fight. And if both parents are disturbed, have disturbed personalities and they might be narcissists or whatever, it's very difficult to break that vicious circle of violence because it's abusive. Uh, it's an abusive relationship to be on a constant fight with somebody. And this relationship can be exactly the opposite of beneficial, can be very hurtful to the children and to the people themselves, the parents. But the most, most importantly, it gets very hurtful and very dangerous for the children. When we decide to become parents, even if we chose the, the less ca capable person to be uh, the father or the mother of our child, we bear responsibility to be there for our children no matter what. So, my dear friend, viewer, if you watch this video, and you are divorced and your ex-partner is somebody who could be specified as undiagnosed or narcissistic or whatever, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you need to keep trying. You need to keep trying, make sense of things that are not logical because you have a child and your child is still young it's not mature enough to understand and realize that my mother or my father is somebody who has his, her own psychological problems 
and they react in ways that are not healthy. When uh, children of undiagnosed parents grow up, they usually uh, need to go to therapy themselves. They go to psychologists' offices, they sit on psychologists' couches, and they cry their hearts out because they have a mother who couldn't show any affection to them, or they had a father who was absent from their life, or they, or they grew up on a very hostile environment. Your children have two parents. You cannot change the other parent. The only thing you could do, you could do, and you haven't done, obviously, is a wise choice on who to have children with. Since you didn't, uh, you haven't made the best possible choice, and you choose, maybe unwillingly or unknowingly, unknowingly to mate and have children together with somebody who is disturbed, I use this word in brackets, then you have to stay there and deal with the consequences. Not stay there as married to them. You have every right to divorce from an unhealthy marriage or a dead marriage or a marriage that is not, um, how can I say, it's not healthy, it's not... um, It's not psychologically healthy. We have other videos about in which situations there is no other solution than divorce. Of course, you are allowed to divorce. You have every legal right and every human right to divorce, but you need to make it work for your children. So in this video, I'm going to give you some advice that might be proven beneficial to you. I hope that it will be proven beneficial to you as to how to interact with your undiagnosed ex. First of all, try to avoid unnecessary fight. Please do. Try. Try. Try hard not to fight for things that are unimportant to you. Choose your fights. Choose your fights wisely. Do not allow yourself to get carried by your ex's need for constant fighting. You don't want this. It's not good for you. It's not good for your children. You should have known by now that going into war with somebody who is illogical and sometimes even acts like paranoid is not going to end well. You will lose a lot of stamina. You will lose a lot of emotion. You will have a lot of unnecessary burden. Your children will be Uh, toxicated, intoxicated by this fight because these kind of people they tend to make the fights in front of their children so as to make a point, look, your dad again came in the house and he made a fight and he's a bad person or your mom, she made a fight again again with me and she always hates me and she's not a good woman and she's not a good person and she's somebody who wants to fight and stuff like that yes, undiagnosed excess bad mouth you to the children. They do. Of course they do. Should you do the same? No. No. You should never bad mouth your ex to your children. If you really worry about your children's well-being, if you really want your children to live in a more balanced, in as balanced way as possible, you should try to give your children stability, emotional stability, and try to reassure them that no matter what, you care for them, you love them, and you are there to understand them. There is no reason, no absolute reason for you to start bad-mouthing your ex. Even if your children stay with you. If your children stay with your ex and you start bad-mouthing your ex, then you are going to cause a, a lot of problems a lot more problems in the relationship that your children have with their other parent and you are going to disturb their own life. One thing that you should be aware of is that there are some red flags or some red lines that we shouldn't allow ourselves to cross. Even if you are so angry, terribly angry with your ex, even if you think that he or she makes the worst 
possible choices about your children. And if you feel that they do not take good care of your children, if you feel that they, they are not the best parents they would be, even if you think that they are not ethical people, they make choices, they're a new girlfriend, they're a new boyfriend, it's not good for them, it, they do stupid choices, you are angry with them, whatever reason, you shouldn't bad mouth your ex in any circumstance. In the case that you worry about your children's well-being and you have uh, some uh, reasons to believe that your children's well-being might be endangered by the choices that your ex-partner makes uh, and you think that maybe psychologically or physically your, your children might be in danger, then you should act in other ways, not through the children. You should contact the social services, you should talk with your lawyer to see what legal uh, ways you have to make um, some um, um, crucial intervention in your children's lives, but bad-mouthing your ex to your children is never a good idea. On the other hand, nevertheless, you should always be able to listen to your children carefully what they say to you. You should be able to provide an empathetic ear for your children and your children should feel free to talk to you about anything that bothers them and not worry that if they say something to you that has to do with their mother or their father, your ex, you might use that against your ex and you might use it to fight your ex and bring your children in the middle of the fight. The first and most important uh, rule on co-parenting with a narcissist or with an undiagnosed person is to allow the children to stay away from the fight, not the children to be the epicenter of the fight. Because a narcissist, an undiagnosed person, a person with a personality disorder of this kind will try hard to make it all about themselves and they would even use the children as a shield or as a weapon against you. And this is the biggest uh, root of parental alienation. Parental alienation is a very important and very crucial problem that happens in uh, uh, situations where you co-parent with a disturbed person. If you haven't heard of this uh, term yet, Parental alienation is a situation where a couple splits or has a divorce or they are together but they don't have a good relationship and the disturbed parent turns the child against the other parent. They make their child to hate the other parent, they make their child to fight against the other parent and they use the child in order to humiliate the other parent in order to take revenge of the other parent and in, the, in order to show a point. That's why I said earlier that this kind of personalities, they do not have any kind of empathy because if they had any empathy, they would be afraid of the damage, the psychological, the severe psychological damage that this would cause to the children. If the children are used as weapons against your ex, the children, your children will be traumatized. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Aristoniki Theodosiu, has made a lot of research on the issue because she's, she's uh, an academic psychologist and she also um, wrote two academic papers on the issue regarding the psychological trauma and the psychological damage that an alienated child suffers. It's a huge deal, uh, parental alienation, um, in Cyprus, we have this uh, community of divorced parents, uh, which is an anti-parental alienation community, and we uh, act in, an act in activistic ways, ways against parental alienation. I'm aware of um, um, similar battles being given in Greece, and also I read with a lot of pleasure that in some countries like Canada, or in some court uh, cases in the United Kingdom, Kingdom there were uh, there was progress of um, 
of putting parental alienation in a position that it should be put. Parental alienation is a crime, it's a crime against the children, and people, parents, who use their children in order to take revenge on their ex should be punished. My personal opinion as a psychologist, as a mother, as a human being, and as an activist on the matter, is that parental alienation should be um, put in a place where if you act like this, it can be proven in court that you act as an alienating parent, you get, uh, you have problem with the law. Because parental alienation is child abuse. And we have proven this, not me, my colleagues, the psychologists who are on research, and Dr. Aristonigi Thedos is one of them, they have proven through their studies and through their um, scientific uh, reports that if a child undergoes parental alienation, they get traumatized psychologically. I know this by clinical experience. The reason I became an activist against parental alienation is this. I myself was married when I was very young. I was still a student when I, was, when I got married. I first got married at the age of 21. I had my son when I was 22, I had my daughter when I was 25, and I had my divorce when I was 26. Uh, my ex-husband is a very normal man. He's not an undiagnosed person. He's not somebody who might, uh, might be diagnosed as narcissistic or whatever. And my experience uh, with my divorce was a good one. Both parents, after the divorce, we strived and we fought for our children's well-being in a good communication. Of course, at the beginning, there were some problems. This is very natural because we were very young when we got married, we were very young when we got divorced, and there were some things to, to, to discuss and to fight about maybe at the beginning, but we both cared deeply for both of our children. So I never had any kind of this experience that after the divorce or during the marriage and before the divorce, the one parent turns the children against the other. No matter what problems I had with my ex-husband, I would discuss them with him and not with my children. No matter what problems he had with me, he would text me, he would email me, he would call me, he would see me face to face, he wouldn't say anything to our children. We protected our children from our own problems. And I feel very proud of this. But since I am a psychologist and I had a private office for 20 years, when my children were older, like five, six, seven years old, I used to see where I was appointed in family court many cases of parental alienation. And I got very upset because I was thinking that why do these parents don't take into consideration their children's well-being? Why do they put their children in such kind of emotional and psychological danger? Why don't they protect their children from their own problems, from their own uh, issues, from their own stupidity, if I'm allowed to put it like this, because it's totally stupid to put your children in the middle of a fight with your ex. You decided to marry your ex, you made this choice, a good choice or a bad choice, whatever, you made that choice, you got divorced, it's your problem, it's not your child's problem, you shouldn't bring the children in the problem. So, after seeing a lot of terrible cases, one case that was very, very, um, very strong for me and very emotional, it happened like 15 years ago. It was a case in family court that was about this father who got divorced from uh, the mother of his children. And after that, the mother wanted to take the children and live abroad. And the father wouldn't uh, agree to that because the children were underage. He wouldn't sign off for his children to live in another continent. She didn't want, want just to go and live in another country. She wanted to live in another continent. So a huge fight become, became between them, which led to a false accusation, accusation of the father for uh, assaulting his children. He went to court. It was the first serious case of parental alienation I, I worked with. It was the first time, it was around 2004, 2005, when I came into contact 
with the term parental, parental alienation while working on that court case. Of course, the man did not molest his children. Of course, um, he was uh, later being vind uh, uh, vindicated because he was uh, he was not he was not guilty of what he was accused of. But I I I felt the trauma not of the father first, of the children first, that they had to go to court and testify against their pa father false accusations that their mother told them to in order to take revenge of their father for not signing them off to go and live in another continent. And secondly, of course, it was horrible for the father that he was falsely accused of molesting his children, that he spent so much money and time to fight for his uh, to prove that he's not guilty for something he never did because he made the mistake to marry a disturbed person and after that case which happened i say 2004 2005 it's a very old case i started to be aware that there is this uh, condition which is called parental alienation which is actually uh, a, a way of uh, a kind of uh, uh, children's uh, psychological abuse in the worst scenario, the worst case scenario. And so later on, uh, back in 2012, 2014, when I met with some parents who were, ha who were having the same problems, similar problems with parental alienation, and they were trying to change family law in Cyprus, we united together and we, we made this, um, this association of Parents Against Parental Alienation, the Cypriot Association of Parents Against Parental Alienation. And we try as activists to change the law in family court so that it's not so easy for anybody to act as an alienated parent. So if you are married with somebody who is, has a disturbed personality, who's undiagnosed, who might be a narcissist or whatever, and after the divorce you have issues with co-parenting, please, please take advice from a psychologist who has experience on the issue. Take advice from a lawyer, from a, a person who knows the law very well and has advice on this issue. Act in a very wise manner. You don't play with people who are disturbed. You do not. You do not make um, uh, experiments. You do not try, let's try the good way, let's try the bad way, let's try and have a loving relationship, let's try to be friends, let's try to be enemies. No, you act in very wise and specific manners in order to protect your children, first of all, of any kind of mistreatment. And I summarize what I said on this video. This is a huge sub subject, one uh, half an hour video will not solve the issue. I just wanted to get you to give you some awareness on the issue. If you are on the verge of getting a divorce, or if you are newly divorced, or you have, you have recently divorced and you have uh, considerations on how to deal with a narcissistic ex or an undiagnosed ex and co-parenting, first of all, you should choose your battles wisely, not to fight about things that are not important. Uh, try to. Uh, try hard, try as hard as you can to let your children out of any kind of fight. Don't allow your children to be the epicenter of, of a fight between you and your ex. Do not badmouth your ex to your children. Try and uh, make sure that you have enough psychological support to go through this difficult period until your children are adults. Because when your children are adults and on, you don't have to talk with your ex anymore. You don't have to decide anything with your ex anymore. And when your children are adults, they can understand. They can understand that um, uh, my mother or my father is a difficult character. He has his issues. He has her issues. So she didn't deal well with the divorce. She badmouthed my father. He badmouthed my mother. But now I'm in a position to understand that I shouldn't mix my feelings with my mother's feelings or my father's feelings. And I have a different relationship with my parent than my, my other parent has. Next week, I will make a video 
about uh, alienated parents on how to deal with parental alienation once it's done to you. This video is a video to help, uh, to help you and I hope that you listen to, his, to this early on, on this procedure, to help you uh, take precautions not to end into a uh, parental alienation situation. Sometimes it's inevitable. The crazier the ex, the, most, the more difficult not to get parental alienation. But for your children's sake and for your own responsibility as a parent, my opinion is that you should try, try hard to smooth communication with your undiagnosed ex and try to choose your battles wisely, try to have psychological backup and um, have a good lawyer to advise you on how to deal with the legal issues in order to go through this difficult period. And please, please, please advise your children to choose wisely who they marry and who they have children with. Because if you have children with somebody who is unstable, then you are bound to have communication with that person even after the divorce when your children are still young. You don't get rid of an unstable ex or of an undiagnosed ex if you divorce. You still have to deal with them. So, uh, if, you did, if you haven't made the wise choice and you got married and had children or had children without getting married with somebody who is not well in their brains, please advise your children not to do the same mistakes. I'm telling you this and I mean it. I'm really happy. No matter how strange it might seem, I'm happy that my ex-husband, the father of my children, is a sane person. I'm very happy about this because this is good for my children and it's good for our lives. I cannot imagine how I would be able to bear a divorce with somebody who is mentally unbalanced or might have a personality disorder, might be a narcissist or whatever. God bless you. <laughs> praying can't help. If you are religious enough or if you believe in God, praying. Pray for calmness, serenity and wisdom. Wisdom to choose your battles and wisdom to put your children, your children's well-being always first. I'm not saying not to divorce. You have every uh, human and legal right to divorce, but you should try your best so that you don't put your children in the middle of a nasty divorce, in the middle of a nasty fight, in the middle of any fight with your ex. I give you my love. Have a nice weekend, everybody. See you next Friday. Hopefully not from the car. Bye. And happy holidays. I know that a lot of you are on holidays now. I hope that you enjoy your holidays. You get refreshed. You recharge your batteries and come back. Bye. If you liked my video, please share it with your friends. Press like. Uh, subscribe to my channel. And give me a thumbs up if you really liked it. Bye.